they get blocked with broken. The devastating consequences of Europe's cells. recent E. coli outbreak has made food safety a talking point throughout the world. In addition to the immediate and obvious health impacts on those infected, the outbreak has had huge long-term trade implications. Today, 300 German companies remain banned from exporting to Russia, while the erroneously implicated Spanish cucumber industry's reputation lies in ruins, next to the discarded cucumbers themselves. But AUT food microbiologist Professor Brooks says the outbreak should be a wake-up call for New Zealand. What I've suggested is that the New Zealand food industry needs to be aware that our markets may start to demand testing for these kind of organisms. Testing's really difficult and really expensive, and I think our industry needs to be aware of that and make plans. However, as Professor Brooks says, testing in a country such as New Zealand where food safety standards are already incredibly high is often an exercise in futility. Testing is always going to be after the fact. So it's going to tell you what happened maybe two or three days ago or possibly a five five or six days ago. Um, so it doesn't actually improve food safety. All it will tell you is that the food you produced was contaminated. But the big problem is the statistical uncertainty in that testing. And at the very low levels we might expect to see these things, the chances are we'll miss them. So the short answer is testing isn't very valuable. He says legislators often don't understand the complexities of food testing. The meat industry is a classic example our level of contamination with O157 is about 1 in 5,000 boxes. Now, in order to detect that, you have to have a huge number of samples. So most of the testing will re result in negatives and no increase in safety. That's the real problem. To test 3,000 samples to get a 5% chance of still letting a positive through is, is, is meaningless. It doesn't improve food safety. Professor Brooks says the outbreak of E. coli, which has now been linked to German bean sprouts, is an incredibly severe strain. It's extraordinary, this one. Normally we see about 2 to 10% of people infected with these, uh, what we call sugar toxigenic E. coli, getting hemolytic uremic syndrome, which damages the kidneys and the intestine. But in this case, uh, about 25 to 30% of those people infected have shown uh, HUS. And that's unheard of. However, the bacteria are easily killed off by heating. Well, in the case of sprouts, uh, they, they're often eaten raw, and that is hazardous. Uh, we've now seen that. Um, on the other hand, if you stir fry them, there would be no problem. As long as they got to about 70, 75 degrees for a few seconds, these organisms would be killed, and that would make them safe. And so really it's about the suppliers and the growers making sure that they don't contaminate them in the first place. Then, in the hands of the consumer, a rinse in, uh, in water or very dilute bleach will remove some of those bacteria. Everyone's got to be a bit more careful and a bit more thoughtful. Benedict Collins, Country 99 TV News.